Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? Um, I am Yair, and I will be um, I will be with the presentation today. I will be your presenter today, and today we are talking about the new PTO utility. Um, Okay. Unitronics. Um, Unitronics has a PTO utility for and has been and has had a, a PTO utility and uh, capability for uh, quite some time, but um, there is a but uh, today we I'm. Uh, Presenting to you a new a new model, a new ladder model, which makes the PTO um, the PTO much easier, the configuration and uh, using the the PTO much easier, and it is way more advanced and contains a lot of a lot more functions. Okay, so what do we need the PTO for? First of all. We need it um, to we need it to control stepper motors and frequent uh, frequency converters, along with servo motors. The these uh, these devices they need a special function special functionality from our PLC from our controller. Um, other uh, devices that we use or. No, I did for the menu. Okay. Um, the let's let's see. Okay. Let's see the history of uh, Unitronics way to PTO. Okay, the first step of PTO, which was the um, it was the simple high speed out put. It um, the the very the very early uh, PLCs of, from Unitronics they contained a high speed output which uh, worked in frequencies half in half a uh, half a kilo half a kilohertz. And the and the NPN, which is 60 kilohertz. The the this PTO it could be controlled with uh, it could it has control on uh, frequency and duty cycle. Now every P, every PLC with uh, transistor outputs contains this this uh, simple high speed output. This was the first, the very first attempt of uh, Un Unitronics PLCs to control a high-speed output. The second step was mu was much more advanced, and it was implemented in Vision 130, 350, and in uh, several snap-ins. The, this bit, this uh, high speed output, which uh, which uh, controls the PTO, it uh, already had a frequency of 200 kilohertz and 60 kilohertz. If you use the snap in, snap in. The advantages of this uh, this PTO was the advantages were that the pulses could be counted and the target. Therefore, it could be set, and you could reach a precise stop after a predefined number of uh, pulses. Now, setting the acceleration and the deceleration times was conducted via the ladder, 
you had uh, you had uh, you you had uh, to to uh, program the ladder so that in a, on a certain uh, on a certain pulse the the PTO will stop the pulses. Just one second, excuse me to interrupt. We see there are some questions. Uh, uh, let's uh, uh, we'll answer all of them. You can, of course, uh, you can pose your questions every time uh, during the session, during the webinar. Uh, but we will enter and we'll answer all the questions one by one at the end. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding. We are continuing. Thank you, Yair. Okay, so. I'm talking about the second, the second step of the PTO of, of uh, Unitronics uh, PLCs. Now, um, one, one more thing we could uh, we could control via the ladder was the direction, um, direction of uh, of the movement. But it was all it was all performed uh, from the ladder. Now I'm reaching the the subject of our, of our webinar of this uh, presentation. The subject is the third step, which is the ladder utility PTO. This is the most advanced and um, most advanced attempt to create a, a really a full PTO, a real and full PTO. This is a, the a PTO which which is based on Letter models. It uh, it is very easily and friendly and user friendly to to program, and it is way more advanced than all our all the possibilities that Unitronics has uh, previously had. The first uh, the first feature of this uh, of the PTO is that you can use either pulse only or pulse and direction or clockwise and counterclockwise. It, what I mean is that they, the, P, the PTO it uses two outputs and uh, one of them can be used for pulse, the other for direction, or you can use one, one output to the clockwise pulses and the second output to the counterclockwise pulses. The latter models for all operations they are very easy and intuitive to program. They are all conducted, they're all performed from the ladder itself. The work is in engineer units. What it means is that if uh, so far the working with PTO was performed with, right, with pulses, it means that you, the target was set in pulses and it was, the pulses were counted uh, for all the calculations. And if, and the, in order to to uh, set a, a let's say a length or um, a number of uh, of cycles in a motor, you had to calculate it yourself yourself with uh, with an external with, with, without any connection without without uh, it with no relevance to the letter. But what we're doing now is we have the. Uh, a calculation within the PTO module. So you can pre-calculate the ratio between the length that you need to control and the number of you, or the number of pulses and you set this ratio once and once you set it you can, uh, you can control the, the PTO using the um, engineer units. You can enter centi centimeters or meters, and the PTO will do the calculation itself. One more thing, one more feature that the new PTO um, can do is to control the jerk, the jerk fa factor. The jerk fa factor is the intensity of the of the curve. It means that it can either be very smooth or very jerky in, uh, and it can be set in 16 steps from, uh, from a full trapezoid to a, to a smooth S-curve, totally smooth and uh, sleek S-curve. 
And that can be decided in, to, in 16 steps. One more thing is that you have both absolute and relative target. It means that you can either control the, the movement in an absolute terms or relative terms. In absolute term, term it, it means that you have a, let's say, a length, and you need to, and you you tell the you tell the motor to reach a certain point on that uh, interval. And if you want to move re relatively, it means that from where you are now, you want to reach a certain point relatively to where you are now but not relatively to the entire length that you are controlling. One more thing about the PTO that you need to know is that it controls the movement in an open loop. The open, it means that um, there is no feedback to the movement. What it means, um, function, the functionality, it depends on, how, on the control itself. If, uh, let's say, you tell the motor to move uh, 100 steps, you, there is no feedback. You don't know if it really did the, the 100 steps. You, only, you, you can only tell it what to do, but you don't get uh, any feedback back. So, in order to perform closed-loop um, functionality, what you need to do is to use external devices. But the PTO itself um, does not do that. One more thing, one, uh, one more thing you need to know about the, P the new PTO is that it controls each axis by itself. There is no um, there is no linkage between each axis between the two axes. This, uh, this can prevent you from, uh, from let's say, drawing a circle because you can tell the, you can tell the, the PTO to reach a certain point, but the way it reaches there is not, uh, it can be decided, it's not definite. It can either, let's say you want to reach from uh, A to B, the way it can be, uh, um, it can be a straight line, it can be a curve, you, you, you will reach the, the last, you will reach the last, um, the, the last point, but there is no way to know if, uh, how exactly this uh, the movement will be. Now I want to go over the models. The first model in the PTO is the configuration. In the configuration, you need to first decide how many channels you're you're about to, you're going to, you need to use. Um, the first, you, you have three, uh, three channels and you need to decide which ones are active. First of all, you choose the appropriate model because not all models of, uh, of controllers can uh, pro provide the PTO functionality. Only two models provide it. The, this is the V130 and the V5 uh, and the V 350, and not and these are the, the models that can, that can uh, provide PTO functionality. After you choose the the model, you need to choose the channels. Now each channel, as we said before, each channel can have three options. So the, the three possible modes are one pulse with no direction, 